Section 7.4, Trigonometric Equations. Now we'll look at how to solve trigonometric equations, and we'll focus on two general methods. The first is algebraic techniques. So with our trig equations, we can do stuff such as factoring trinomials. We can also use other algebraic techniques. We'll look at those. And those will be just straightforward. And then there's the inverse trig techniques. This happens when you're trying to solve for the angle, so when your x is inside the trig function. We'll look at those examples as well. The best way to learn how to solve these problems is just practice. So I'm going to put lots of examples into the videos for this section. Watch the ones you need to watch. If you have more questions or if you want to see additional examples, just let me know and I'll be happy to add some more videos. But we're going to look at a quick outline of each type of problem. The first we have is the basic solving of a trig function. We're going to solve the equation 3 minus 6 cosine x equals 0. If you just have one trig function, what we're going to do is we're going to try to get it alone. So we're going to have negative 6 cosine x equals negative 3 because we, well let's start at the very beginning. We start with negative, or 3 minus 6 cosine x equals 0. To solve for x, we're first going to subtract 3 from both sides. We get negative 6 cosine x equals negative 3. Now divide by negative 6 on both sides. We get cosine x equals 1 half. And this means if we were to go to our unit circle, we're solving for when cosine is 1 half. And that occurs up here at pi thirds and also down here at 5 pi thirds. Thus, our two possible answers are pi thirds and 5 pi thirds. However, we're not quite done yet. So we know that x can equal pi thirds, or x can equal 5 pi thirds. But, remember this. We could also go all the way around and then up to our pi thirds. In that case, it's pi thirds plus 2 pi. Or, we could make two full laps and then up to pi thirds. And that angle would be pi thirds plus 4 pi. We can do the same thing with the 5 pi thirds. We could make a full lap and then hit 5, per five pi thirds. That angle would be 5 pi thirds plus 2 pi. We could also rewrite these a little bit if we wanted to. Uh, this would be 7 pi thirds. This one would be 13 pi thirds. This one is 11 pi thirds. Or we can make two full laps. One, two, and then hit five pi thirds. In which case it's five pi thirds plus four pi, which is going to equal 17 pi thirds. Hopefully what you're seeing is that there's a lot of different angles that will give us the correct answer pi thirds plus 2 pi, you can also do pi thirds minus 2 pi, pi thirds plus 4 pi, or we can look at all the 5 pi thirds. What we get then is something you can write like this. The x is going to be all the solutions of the form pi thirds plus 2 pi times n, and 5 pi thirds plus 2 pi times n, such that n is an integer. And that would be your final answer. That n is an integer is basically just telling us that we can take pi thirds plus 2 pi times a negative 1, which would be a negative 2 pi, we could do pi thirds plus pi, 2 pi times 0, which is just 0. We could do pi thirds plus 2 pi. We could do pi thirds plus 4 pi. As long as n is an integer, which is any whole negative or positive number, n 0 is included in that as well. All right, let's look at the second example, a squared trig function. 